A function URL is a dedicated HTTPS endpoint for your Lambda function. In a previous video, I showed you how to create a Lambda function URL for a .NET application. We learned how to build a single function API endpoint using function URLs. If you're new to that, I highly recommend checking that video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. However, the function URL that we created was publicly accessible, which means anyone with the URL can invoke the Lambda function. Now, when building applications, we want to be securing our URLs. Function URLs also supports the authentication type of AWS IAM. Once enabled, this requires an AWS IAM token to access the function URL. In this video, let's learn how to enable AWS IAM auth type on our function URL. I will also show you how to invoke these functions from Postman and also from a .NET application. You can also use this to invoke from other programming languages. Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Rahul and I make videos on .NET, Azure, AWS and DevOps. Now this video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my AWS on .NET series. Now without much delay, let's jump straight into learning how to authenticate our function URLs. Now as a quick recap, in the previous video, I created a function URL using Visual Studio and we have the function.cs and we created multiple endpoints in our function URL. So we handle the get and the post and I'm assuming you would have implemented the delete and other HTTP verbs. Now this was returning back the data in a hard-coded manner, but you could very well be writing this to a database. Now we deployed this function to my AWS account. So if I navigate to Lambda, you can see one Lambda function. And here I have user-service. Inside this, we enable function URLs from the configuration tab under function URL. Now this is the URL that we currently have. And as you can see, the auth type is currently set to none. However, function URLs supports two different types of authentication modes. One is the none and the other option is AWS IAM. So when using this, Lambda uses the AWS identity and access management, IAM in short, to authenticate and authorize the request. So let's see how we can enable this and how we can call our function from other applications. So let's navigate back to the console. Let's edit this and modify this none to be AWS IAM. And let's click save. Now this is automatically set it to the auth type as AWS IAM. Now if I navigate to Postman, which is a utility that I used to invoke our function URL, and let's make a post request on our URL. So let's click send. And in this case, now you can see we return a 403 forbidden. This is returned by the Lambda infrastructure itself. This is because we haven't passed a valid authentication token to access this URL. Now this is going to be the same if I was to make the request on the get endpoint as well. Now all these requests are not reaching our function itself. It is getting rejected much before that. So let's see how we can update these requests to have the token to be passed along with this. For this, we first need to be creating a new user or you can use an existing user inside your AWS IAM. So let's navigate to the AWS console. Let's open this in a new tab and let's navigate to IAM. In here, you can see we have the users section and we can create a new user or use an existing user from here. So let's create a new user. So let's click add users and let's say function URL user, for example, just for demo purposes. And let's select access key because we need an access key ID and a secret to access this. So let's click next permissions. Now, depending on what this user needs access to, you can add them to different groups. For now, let's skip this and click to next tags. Let's skip this as well and let's create the new user. Now this creates a new user inside the AWS IAM. Now I have the access key ID, so let's copy that. Let's also copy the access key into my Windows clipboard. Now we can use this to access the function. So let's navigate back into Postman. Now under authorization, we can change the type and we can choose AWS signature. 
Now, Postman automatically gives this option, which makes it easier to invoke function URLs. So let's select that. Now this gives us the option to enter the access key and the secret key. So let's use Windows V to open the Windows Clipboard Manager and let's specify the access key first. Let's also specify the secret key. So using Windows V again, let's paste in the secret key. Now in this case, I need to specify a AWS region. So if I come back to our Lambda function, you can see this is in the Sydney region, which is AP Southeast 2. So let's specify that. So let's say AP dash Southeast dash two as the region. Let's also specify the service name. In this case, this is Lambda. Now, in this case, if we were to click send again, you can see this is still forbidden. This is because we haven't applied any permissions for our newly created user to access this Lambda function. So to give permissions, let's come back to the AWS console Let's go into IAM Management Console and let's close this. And let's navigate to the newly created user, which is the function URL user. Inside here, we can create an inline policy and give this access to our Lambda function. So let's click Choose a Service and let's specify Lambda. Now in this case, we want to have permissions to invoke the function and the function URL. So let's just select those two options. Now, depending on the user and the way you're setting up IAM permissions, you can give as many permissions you want for this particular user. For now, I just need these two permissions. Let's click the resource and let's specify the ARN that this has access to. So let's navigate back to our Lambda function and let's copy the ARN of this Lambda function and use this inside here. So let's paste it. This specifies the access to just this Lambda function. So we have restricted the access for this user to invoke the function and the invoke function URL for this specific Lambda function. So let's click review policy. Let's give this a name. So let's say function URL user dash test policy. And let's create a policy here. Now this creates the inline policy, which means the user now has access. Now, if I come back to Postman and make a request again, you can see that right now it returns a 400 bad request. Now, this might take some time to reflect once you have applied the permissions. This is because we had previously cached a token when we made the initial request. Now, in this particular case, we can see this request has gone all the way to our Lambda function. And this is returning a bad request because we have not specified a user ID on the get endpoint. So let's specify user ID equals and let's specify a random GUID. So let's use the double curly brackets and use the GUID property and click send again. Now this time we get back the response as expected and we also have the 200 OK as the response status. Now if we was to change this as a post, let's make sure we have the body and let's send this again. And this is also going to work as expected. Now Postman is successfully able to use the authorization credentials that we have passed here to use this as the header value when making request. Now if we were to look at the console, we can see the request that's going out. So inside the request headers, you can see this sets the authorization attribute and it selects the credentials inside that. Now let's see how we can use these function URLs from a different application. So let's say we have a different .NET application which needs to talk to this function URL endpoint. This also needs to be sending in these credentials to access it successfully. So to simulate this, let's open Linkpad, which is a simple .NET utility to write .NET scripts. And I will use this to simulate a .NET function. So let's use C Sharp program to create a new function. So let's create a new HTTP client. So let's create a new instance of HTTP client. Let's make sure to add in the appropriate usings. And let's use this HTTP client to get a sync on this URL. So let's navigate back to Postman. Let's copy this full URL and let's paste this in here. Now instead of dollar dollar GUID, let's use string interpolation and pass in GUID.new GUID. So let's specify GUID.new GUID. 
So let's close this and let's get the response. So let's make sure to add a weight and let's update this void as a sync task main. Let's also make sure to add the appropriate usings and we have a simple call to the get async. Now let's dump the response. So let's specify response dot status code dot dump. So dump simply logs this to the console in linkpad. Let's also get the response body. So let's say var response content is equal to response dot content dot read as string async. Now this returns as an async. So let's use a wait and let's also dump the response content to the console. Now, if I simply run this as is, this is going to return a forbidden and it says message forbidden. This is because this URL is not currently authenticated. Now we need to pass in the credentials so that it can talk to this function URL. Now, when we were using Postman, Postman was automatically adding in this option for authorization and specifying this authorization header using this specific value. Now, we need to be able to create this header inside our .NET application as well. Now, if we navigate back to the function URL documentation, you can see when using the AWS IAM auth type, we use the AWS signature version 4 as the algorithm. Now Postman is automatically using the AWS signature version 4 to sign these HTTP requests. Now we also need a way to do this from our .NET application. Now luckily for us .NET developers, we have the AWS signature version 4 NuGet package which we can use. Now if you navigate to this URL, which I will put in the description below, you can see about this NuGet package. So let's install this NuGet package and we can use this along with the HTTP client. All we need to do is specify the credentials and also pass this into the HTTP client when we are making the request. We also need to specify the region, the service and the other details as we specified in Postman. So let's come back to our Linkpad script here and let's add a NuGet package. Now to add a NuGet package, all I need to do is press F4 and it prompts up the dialog to add NuGet packages. Now if you're using Visual Studio or any other IDE, you can use the appropriate way to add NuGet packages. And let's select add NuGet and let's search for this NuGet package. So let's use search online and specify AWS signature version 4. Let's add this to this current query. For you, it will be the project and let's add the namespaces inside the query. So let's click OK and let's close this. Now, once we have the credentials, what we need to do is create a new immutable credential and pass in the value. So let's create this new type. So let's say where credentials is equal to new immutable credentials, which is coming from amazon.runtime. And let's specify the access key ID and the access key. We also need to have a token, which can be null in this case. Now let's come back to Postman. Let's select this access key. Now this is for the test user that we created in the IAM. So let's use the exact same key inside our .NET code as well. So let's specify this. And let's also get the access secret key. And let's paste this in here. Now, once we have the credentials, if we navigate back, we can see all we need to do is when we do the get async, we have to specify the region name, the service name and the credentials. So let's copy that and let's specify that in here. So let's add a comma and let's give these three values. Now, in our case, the region is AP Southeast 2. So let's copy that and let's replace this US West. Let's also specify the service name, which in our case is Lambda. So let's replace this to be Lambda. And we are also specifying the credentials. Now, once we have this specified, let's invoke this. And this is going to use this token. And now we get a OK response and we get the value back as expected. Now we were successfully able to make a request from our .NET application using the credentials and invoking our function URL lambda function.
Now, if your .NET application that is accessing the function URL is already running as part of an environment where you have the AWS credentials set up, you don't have to hard code these credentials in here. So instead of using this hard coded credentials, we can use the fallback credential factory. So let's use the fallback credential factory dot get credentials method. Now this is going to get the credentials from your environment. Now, if you're new to this, I walk through how the credential factory works in my AWS credentials video. I highly recommend checking that out if you're new to this. Now, all this is doing is using the credentials that's set up inside my local development environment. Now, if you're running this on AWS environment, it can use the IAM permissions of that environment it is running on. So as long as that environment has permissions to talk to the Lambda function, this will work as expected. So once we use the fallback credential factory dot get credentials, rest of the code is still similar. So if I run this again, this is again going to invoke my Lambda function because of the credentials I have set up on my local machine. So now without having to hard code any credentials, I am able to make a call to this Lambda function. Now, similar to the get async, we can also make a post call. So we can specify post async. In this case, we don't need to specify the user ID, but we'll need to specify the content. So let's specify the content as new string content, and let's create the string content in here. We can pass the JSON request object inside this. So let's also specify the encoding. So in this case, let's specify this as UTF-8. And let's specify the media type as application slash JSON. Now we can pass the region name and service name credentials as expected. To create a JSON content, we can use JSON serializer from system.text.json and call the serialize method. In this case, we can pass in an object. So let's simply create a new object. What we need is the ID. So let's specify a guid.newguid. And let's also pass the name property and let's specify Rahul, for example. And let's close this brackets. Let's make sure to use capital I and let's invoke this function. Now, in this case, this is making the string content and passing in the same credentials as before. Now, you can see this returns back an accepted and returns the GUID that it was accepted with. Now, if you run this again, it will create a new GUID. Now, depending on your application, you would be passing the appropriate content to this endpoint. I hope this helps you to understand how to protect your function URL Lambda functions using AWS IAM auth type option. Now we learned how to enable the AWS IAM auth type on the function URL. And we also learned how to invoke this URL by passing in the appropriate credentials. We created a new user and used the access key ID and the secret. And later we saw how we can use the credentials factory to retrieve the credential to invoke this particular function URLs. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon.